Hello and welcome to Microwave Laboratory. In this lab, we will try to measure microwave frequency using two techniques. So the title of experiment is microwave frequency measurement using slotted line technique and reflecting sheet method. So what is the setup for this experiment? The general setup which we have used in our earlier experiments is used here. If you have directly came to this video, my request please go back and watch our earlier videos so that you can get an idea about the generalized setup of microwave test bench and how maximum power can be generated. So the first block will be gun power supply, then gun oscillator, isolator, pin modulator, frequency meter, slotted line and VSWR meter. So the same setup you can see here, I have connected a gun power supply to gun oscillator to this cable. Then we have an isolator. In between of isolator and attenuator, I have uh, I isolator and gun oscillator. I have placed a fixed 5 dB attenuator. Then we have pin modulator. It is also biased using this gun power supply. So the cable is used to connect gun power supply with pin modulator. Then we have a frequency meter, a wave meter kind of a frequency meter, which is used to directly measure the frequency that is why it is also called as a DRF direct readout frequency meter. Then we have a slotted line and the slotted line section we have connected through probe to the output instrument. It may be CRO or a VSWR meter. So as you know that for this experiment first or for any experiment which you want to perform using this microwave test bench you first have to generate a maximum microwave power. If you don't know with this setup how to generate a maximum micro power, so please go back and see our detailed video wherein we have discussed about how maximum microwave power can be generated or what are the different setups to be used to generate a maximum microwave power. In short, there are four setups. We have to adjust the gun bias voltage, we have to adjust pin bias voltage, pin frequency and fourth one is the micrometer plunger position. So all these four settings you have to do to generate a maximum microwave power on your output instrument. So now you can see I have already set this test bench for maximum microwave power and if I change any one of these settings output power will change. So that we have already discussed. Now what I will do I will connect instead of because I just wanted to show you the square wave before we proceed for today's experiment. Now, now instead of CRO, I will connect VSWR meter. Since now, the needle, needle is going out of the scale, so I will put 10 dB attenuation. And if now, you know that I have connected a short plate over here whose impedance is 0 ohm. So purposely I have connected impedance which is not equal to the characteristic impedance of this test bench. Alright, so it, it produces impedance mismatch and result of that part of incident wave will reflect back and there will be a generation of standing wave pattern. So this is how the standing wave pattern will be generated inside the waveguide. So you have connected at the load you have connected a short. So result of that at short we have a zero uh, location or minima point for your VSWR and as if you move from load towards generator you will find that there will be alternating maxima, minima, maxima and minima. Okay it goes up to generator you can uh, visualize this as the standing waves are present inside this waveguide and the distance between two adjacent minimas will be lambda g by 2 since the 
wave is inside the waveguide, we will call that wavelength as guide wavelength, which is lambda g. And the distance between adjacent minimas or maybe adjacent maximas is lambda g by 2. Generally, we prefer to measure the distance between adjacent minimas because those minimas are sharply defined in comparison to that of the maximas. So the same thing, I will just try to visualize you. We have connected with short plate and result of that part of incident signal is being reflected and standing wave pattern is being generated. And now if I move this slotted line, you can see VSWR meter and this uh, carriage probe at the same time and you will find that as if I am moving needle is deflecting. So now it has it is going towards minima again maxima minima maxima so needle is moving in between maximum and minimum points so what I have to do I have to measure the distance between two adjacent minimas so I will first come to one minima point so let us say this is minimum point and I will use this scale to read out the value and this is a reference so you can easily see this scale is now phi u and 0 is pointing towards 1 2 3 4 divisions so the reading is 5.4 centimeters so I have to note it down the first minima I will write as first minima location is 5.4 centimeters now I will measure the second minima or adjacent minima to this so I will move in the same direction towards generator and I will try to see the adjacent minima so if you move ahead first you will get the maximum point and if you go ahead you will get adjacent minima so this is the minima and now if you can read it out it is 3 point almost 1 2 and 3 if you see on the VSWR meter this is exact location of minima so 3 point 3 and earlier minima was at 5.4 so if you find out the difference between 3.3 and 5.4 so that will give you lambda g by 2 so it is 2.1 centimeters it is lambda g by 2 now what you have to do since the wavelength which you have measured is for the standing wave and if you use this lambda directly to calculate frequency your frequency calculations will be completely wrong. First you have to convert this guided wavelength to free space wavelength. So what is the equation you may be knowing from your microwave engineering class. First I will multiply it by 2 so that I can get lambda g which is 4.2 and I will use this formula lambda g is equal to lambda 0 divided by under root of 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c bracket square where lambda c is actually the cutoff wavelength of the waveguide cutoff wavelength of the waveguide and for since the wave is traveling inside the waveguide in a TE10 mode lambda c will be 2 times of a where a is the broader dimension of waveguide if you take a waveguide and try to find out its a broader dimension so this is broader dimension of a waveguide and this is a narrower dimension the same thing I have drawn here and for X band waveguides, this dimension is almost 2.286 centimeters. Approximately, you can take it 2.3 centimeters, or you can take a waveguide and measure this dimension. So, you will find that it is exactly 2.3 centimeters. So, this is A. And if you take 2 times of this A, you will get the cutoff wavelength. So, this is your cutoff wavelength for this waveguide and by that you can calculate lambda 0 by solving this equation you know lambda g you know lambda c and solve for lambda 0 so you will get lambda 0 is 3.10 centimeter and by using classical equation of wavelength and frequency relation you can always calculate for frequency so this is the first 
technique which is called as the slotted line technique we have to measure the distance between adjacent minima for a vswr pattern inside the waveguide calculate lambda g from lambda g by 2 use this equation and using concept of cut off wavelength calculate lambda 0 and it will give you the frequency now let us try to understand the second technique which is reflecting sheet method so the second technique is reflecting sheet method i will remove this short plate now the waveguide load is open but remember open is not perfect open at microwave frequencies but anyways it will offer some impedance mismatch so that again the signal coming to the load will experience some other impedance than that of the transmission line impedance so it will reflect that again our job is to measure the distance between two adjacent minima and this time this distance is not lambda g by 2 rather it will be lambda 0 by 2 because now the wave is in free space because we have made it open now wave is inside the uh, reflecting sheet and this particular point so if i move this you can see the vswr meter needle again it is moving from minimum to maximum position right so you have to catch the distance between two adjacent minima make sure that your reflecting sheet is completely placed in the right angles so that it will give you accurate results so first i will come to a minima point yeah so this is the first minima you can see and now i will take a scale make it a reference point let us say i will reference it at some point let us say 6 is my reference where i have got the first minima i will move the sheet in forward direction so first i will get maxima as you know that on the standing wave pattern if i move further i will reach to maximum and then i will reach to minima so this is minimum point and now you can see on the scale it is 4.5 so earlier was 6 and now it is at 4.5 so the difference between 6 and 4.5 is 1.5 cm so this is what what we have measured we have again measured the distance between two adjacent minima but in this case our load was not short we have allowed our microwave signal to come in a free space so this time the distance between adjacent minima on standing wave pattern will give us lambda 0 by 2 which we have calculated 1.5 cm so obviously lambda 0 will be two times of this it will be 3 cm and using again f is equal to c by lambda 0 we can calculate frequency which is which is around around 10 gigahertz okay so we have done with the two techniques slotted line as well as reflecting sheet how to write the result so as i said i have generated a maximum microwave power so you know that from our earlier videos i have set the micrometer plunger to 13 mm and for 13 mm if you can come this side and see i have set this micrometer plunger to the position 13 mm this is 10 11 12 and one division ahead exactly 13 mm so for 13 mm the manufacturer has provided the chart and it is given if you keep plunger at 13 mm the oscillator will generate 9.9 gigahertz but one more thing you have to keep in your mind the, this chart is given as 10 volts even at 10 volts rather i have set it to power supply i have set it to 9 volts to uh, avoid any extra voltage going to gun diode so 13 mm position is 9.9 gigahertz that is why i have written here frequency generated by gun oscillator and read by using calibration chart provided by manufacturer it is 9.9 gigahertz one more check we can use here that is about the drf we can use the drf that is direct read out frequency meter we can use it to measure the frequency so i will for a moment i will just place a short plate and we will just take the reading of even drf meter so that we can compare all the four readings okay so now you can see 
on the VSWR meter itself, you know the concept of this DRF. You have to keep rotating this DRF and you should see the dip on frequency meter. So I will just adjust the slotted line which will give me a deflection in a good region of my VSWR meter panel and now I rotate the frequency meter. So at resonance what will happen? The frequency of this frequency meter and the frequency traveling down the waveguide will match and all the energy will be captured by this meter and we get the zero reading or minimum reflection at the output instrument. So you can see here it is minima coming. If I rotate now frequency meter may be in anti-clockwise direction so output will increases. Again I will come back to the resonance point. If I rotate frequency meter in clockwise direction again signal strength will increases. So this is the point of resonance. The same way we have used in our earlier videos and now you have to at this resonance you have to measure the frequency for from DRF again. So it is exactly this is the scale 9.5 and one division ahead. You know that uh, one division carries 5 megahertz which we have explained in our earlier videos. So 9500 plus 5 megahertz so that comes 9505 megahertz. So the same thing we have written frequency measured using DRF is 9.505 gigahertz and the two techniques which we have used using slotted line we got 9.677 the same thing we have written in the result and the frequency measured using reflecting sheet we have got 10 gigahertz okay so all these four frequencies we have written but you can see there is a slight mismatch in all these four frequencies and it is obviously it should be there because this is experimentation. So just to give you a feel uh, what should be the difference which can be acceptable for doing frequency measurement I have just uh, done a small case study I call it as error estimate. Let us say if at the time of taking readings by mistake or human error you had 1 mm of uh, error or uh, difference for the measurement let us say. Uh, you you wanted to measure the 30 mm but by mistake you have measured 31 mm or maybe 29 mm that means there is a 1 mm difference in your measurement at the time of experiment. So the equivalent frequency if you see for 30 mm that is a 3 centimeter frequency will be 10 gigahertz and for 31 mm that is a 3.1 centimeter frequency equivalent frequency will be 9.677 gigahertz. If you see the difference of this it is almost 323 megahertz. So what it indicates if you have 1 mm of error at the time of doing experiment of this frequency measurement it may result into almost 300 megahertz of a difference in your frequency measurements right okay. I hope you have liked this video and uh, understood the frequency measurement using uh, reflecting sheet as well as slotted line uh, method that's all for this video thanks for watching.